ability on the Chapin Road. It's, a, it's really basically a one lane road. So in order for people to be able to visit the forest, um, our town forest, they have to park on the Pekin and go in that way. And that is, although it's a, it's, it is a class four road, technically, it's, a very, it's like a very rough trail now. In fact, there's a ravine there that's kind of collapsed. And in order to get through there, you have to go onto private property because you can't really go in and out of the ravine. Um, so it's not very accessible from the Pekin side. From the Chapin Road side, it's accessible, but there's absolutely no place. Well, maybe there's room for maybe one car or two cars maybe to um, park. And so the Conservation Commission, um, after doing it, um, decided that we would like the public to be able to visit this forest um, without having to trek over private land from the Pekin. And that would mean building a some kind of parking area um, at the basically at the entrance to the forest. And so the, some of the members of the Conservation Commission and Alfie and some of the neighbors um, and Paul Hannon, who was doing looking at it from a surveyor point of view uh, without charge, um, we met out there and um, we all looked at it and talked about it and kind of identified an area that is relatively flat and it looks like that would be um, a good place to develop a parking area. And as Alfie just mentioned to you, um, we had this discussion about whether this should be accessible year round and felt, well, yeah, it should be accessible year round. I mean, it's a town, it's a town forest. And um, eventually what we wanna do is um, work with the trails committee and develop some trails through the forest. It's really a lovely forest. Um, you know, we really encourage people to go look at it. Um, and anyway, so that's the idea. So in order to make it accessible, as Alfie explained, um, the little part of the road that goes into the forest would have to be widened and there have to be a little turnaround in addition to the parking area. And we're talking about, you know, I don't know the exact dimensions, so we're talking about maybe, um, maybe holding six cars. Um, we, that hasn't been decided. Um, but anyway, that. that's where we are with it. And we really, we need the permission of the select board to go ahead and do it. And it's already almost August and we're feeling pretty bad because so much time has passed. And, you know, the forest still isn't really accessible except as I said, from the Pekin going over private land. And, and there were some issues last year also at hunting season. Um, we wanted to do our fall foliage walk through the forest and we had it all set up. And then one of the landowners said, well, it's hunting season, you know, and I have my, um, you know, up in the tree, my tree stand right near there. And I don't think it's a good idea. So we canceled it. So is the idea that the, the estimated cost of between five and eight thousand dollars would come out of the conservation fund? Well, we don't know where it would come from. You know, I'm not sure it's something that meets any of the, I don't know if it meets the um, standards for the conservation fund. I, I, I don't know if it does. Um, and I apologize uh, for the interjection. This is uh, Thomas Cronin. Uh, I just wanted to mention that myself and some other neighbors uh, that live on the end of Cape and Road uh, have joined the call. And so we just hope that at some point during this conversation, we would uh, be able to, to uh, you know, share our, uh, our thoughts on it as well if the select board is willing to hear us. Excuse me, thank you for interrupting. We see you and we plan to give you an opportunity to speak. Uh, thank you, Denise, appreciate it. Um, yeah, I guess we have to work that out. So what are you, we're going to let the members of the public speak. So you're looking for the select board to make a decision on moving forward with this project. Is that what you're looking for? We are looking for that. I mean, you know, as you know, the select, the uh, conservation commission doesn't really have much of a budget. We don't ask for much. I think we have two hundred dollars a year. And as I said, I'm not sure whether this really fits any of the standards for using the conservation fund. We're not acquiring land. Um, it's, yep. But in any event, you know, we can talk about that, but we, we were hoping that we would get a more specific estimate from Alfie and then we would be able to talk in more detail about whether the select board would have the money to, um, 
to pay for it. I mean, it's not something that we budgeted for at budget season, so we'd have to see where we are with the highway budget. Okay. Well, it's a town forest. I mean, you know, as you know, the, the Conservation Commission just uh, makes recommendations to the select board. We kind of manage the forests, but we don't have a budget to spend on the forests. Um, now let's see if board members have any questions, and then we'll go around and take comments from the on the neighbors. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we got out for here to road commissioners. So this is for clarification purposes, and this is both a question and a statement. My understanding is that the actual um, dollar costs outside of what we pay our staff, our highway staff. On a weekly basis, in terms of their pay, um, the dollar cost would be, you know, gravel and that kind of stuff, right? Fuel, yes. maybe. Um, we own a machine, like there's wear and tear and depreciation that goes along with that. How many hours do you think that? Oh, it's man, a couple of days. Couple of days. Couple of days. days. Yeah. I mean, so money out of pocket probably wouldn't be great. Because we already have the ground. It would be well, we do, but I mean, it's still going to be a cost. That would be money out, of, be money out of pocket. Yeah. Whereas the labor and the machine, as John said, we already own the machine. We're going to pay the crew anyways. It's just going to take a little bit of time from other projects. Mm -hmm. I don't see it being a problem. I would, I would support it. No. But I think there are other. Uh, issues that would have to be worked out before we do this, but I think money I can handle. And uh, in terms of allocation of staff resources, when is the best time to do it to do something like that? Right now. Right now. Because it's dry, it's, you know, we're not dealing with muddy, rainy stuff. And, and you know, I mean, not tomorrow, but because right. my excavator is in shot, yeah. but, but, uh, as right now. Yeah. Right. but as you're making your schedule for the weeks to yes, come, I could, yes, I could make it happen relatively soon if, if the board decided that was what we wanted to do. Okay, thank you. Rick, or, Rick, Rick or um, Sharon, what's your name? <laughs> do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. No, I don't. I don't that's your mind. I don't know if that's uh, sit, is it clear? Six cars, is it clear where where this would be? Is that part of what you guys kind of scoped out? Yes, we actually put stakes up mm -hmm. okay. where where we thought the area would be. Okay. Are the stakes still there? The I haven't up? been by for a while. It's sort of out of my travel path. I go out and check that road, but I turn around at our turnaround, which is long before, because this, this parking area will be a stretch onto a private and class four road, and then it'll go on to strictly class four. When I mean, it turns to class four, where we turn around is where it starts class four. So Whereas some of this area is maintained by the development. Ooh, that's, a, that's interesting. So, Both. you know, so oh, no, it's no, a no, class no. four. Well, they can plow they, shape and road. They plow it. They, they consider it development. Yeah, but if it's a private road, no, no, it's no. not private. I just find the scope. Okay, it turns not a private off road. the class four. It turns to a private road, which is Blackberry Ridge. Right. That's where it's private. But every but some of that stretch getting to that is class four, which is still a town road. But they maintain it. They plow it. They okay. So there is. I'd so like to add something. Just a minute. So there. So let me just say what I just heard. So the 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 development, the Blackberry Ridge development, maintains part of the town's Class Four road and maintains the portion that is would lead to this six car spot. Okay. So in the winter, who would maintain? Would we maintain this lot, or would this be more spring and summer seasonal? Well, that's a, that's a question that needs to be talked about. Is if it, if this parking area is going to be year round, then we would plow that section because we would have to most likely we're going to have to plow the turnaround the the parking area 
as well as plow an area for us to, to get there. Okay, so, so uh, yeah, it's going to add a little bit more money to or more time to that plow route if we uh, wanted to go there. If we wanted to go with the year round, yeah, we, we could, could just say no, we're not yeah, we could just not go year round, yeah. and yeah, right, or they right, they could ski in, they could they could go. I mean, a lot of times of the year you can still go, um, without it being plowed all year. You know, last year we didn't really have deep snow until after January, so right, right. they could get a lot of use out of it. I just want to make sure that we're not going to be doing something on somebody's private. No, uh, it's a class four. Class four. It would still, it would still everything, <laughs> everything would be either on the class four or the town forest property. Yeah. And Alfred, you mentioned a few minutes ago that there are other issues to work out. What are those other issues? Well, I think that. There's a few people on the computer that will clear that up for you. Yeah, I think there's going to be a little thinking. bit of pushback okay. from this or for yeah. this. We'll give them an opportunity to speak. Um, Stephanie wanted to. Well, I just want a clarification before Stephanie speaks. Um, this whole uh, Chapin Road development discussion before it was developed, I was brand new to the town. Right? So that's how long ago this was. So it's 2002. And I remember it's Bob Whitley, chair of select board, having a discussion with his board members. Paul Manning was on it, and Randy Fitch, I know, was on it. Maybe the East was. I can't remember. But there was discussion about how do we get off the dime. There was a kind of a log jam, and the developer, his name is Scribner, um, wanted to, was trying to, was negotiating with the town. Uh, an arrangement to a lot of development to happen. And the conclusion of that negotiation, which was voted on by Sleckboard and agreed to by Sleckboard, was uh, they would fund the upgrading of the class four. It would still be a class four, but the, it was a you know, rough, woodsy type backcountry road. It wasn't one that was utilized, utilizable for development. And there was a lot of material that needed to be done. Don Simmerton was a road commissioner. And the select board authorized the highway department to perform the necessary work that the commissioner said needed to happen. Um, and the funding of that work was to be paid for, and eventually got paid for, I think, by the developer to his time payments. But, um, and it was understood that the developer um, would make clear to the folks buying a lot that they were responsible for maintaining that class four road um, leading up to their development. So that was all part of the record back then. I just wanted isn't that, isn't that in the deed? I don't know if it's in the deed, but it's in the town record, that arrangement. Yeah, I, don't I remember it's in this deed, now. But it's vague in my memory, but I don't yeah. remember. So I, just, I just want to make that clear. That's, exactly. that's kind of the background. Okay. Stephanie, one more comment, and then I'm going to let the neighbors speak. I was mostly going to say what John said was to provide a little bit of background. Paul Hannon explained it to me when we were out there that there was um it was going um the the developer was required the developer was required to do that and I understand people said it is in the deeds that they have to maintain that part of the road class four because they the developer wouldn't give it to the town so that was the deal. All right, I'm going to go around the room. Um... And I hope that if somebody, one of the neighbors says something that the other neighbor, if they're going to say the same thing, they'll make it quick. Kyle? Sure, thank you, Kyle Booth. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to express a concern that, you know, this, this plan seems to be not very fully thought out yet. There's a lot of questions of will it be, you know, seasonal or full-time use where funding will come from to pay for the project um, and then other items such as how this affects you know the wildlife and the habitat there and um, you know runoff with water making the parking lot where that water is going so there are several considerations that we haven't seen full details to that we would re really like to see you know before this does move forward if it does Thank you. Okay, so just to be clear, your concerns for the minutes are how it will affect the wildlife habitat, 
runoff and was there something else? Seasonal, seasonal. Oh, the, the usage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and where funding is coming from for the project, and what the true cost of the project is. I I don't know what you mean by the true cost, but um, you yes, we just discussed. we just discussed that a few minutes ago. So I I haven't seen estimates or or you know itemized of of what each piece will cost as far as what water runoff will cost. And I don't know if that's required at this point, but that's you know something that would be good to understand. Mm -hmm. that's, okay. that's typically not. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah. We, would, we would follow the same erosion control practices as we do on the same. I don't know if you heard Alfred, but we would follow the same erosion control practices as we do anywhere else. Yes, I heard that. Thank you. Um, Danielle, did you want to go next? You have to unmute Danielle. Maybe she's gone. All right, Tom. Nope, not yet. <laughs> All right, Danielle, would you like to speak? Not yet. You don't want to speak yet? Well, I mean, I correct. Okay, well, let's Right, not yet. All right, Tom. Uh, yes, thank you for the opportunity to speak and I apologize for the interruption. I appreciate you recognize us in attendance. Um, my question is, uh, or one of my questions, part of the discussion, uh, and I'm still a little bit unclear. So, and Stephanie, thank you for the background there. Uh, it's maintained by the town to where the mailboxes are. And there is a plow turnaround there and enough parking for maybe two or three cars. Uh, and then from the mailboxes to the beginning of Blackberry Ridge Road uh, has been privately maintained by the residents of the South Development on Blackberry Ridge Road. So I'm wondering if a parking lot was to get put for the use by the public to access this town forest, would the residents of that subdivision be expected to maintain that section of the road from the mailboxes to the road sign? Because, uh, you know, I'm just curious uh, with higher, potentially higher traffic use, if that would increase the burden of cost to, uh, you know, to us that live in the, the development back here. Um, and then, oh, sure. See if we get an answer to your question, Albert. Can you? Well, I, I don't have a clear picture in my head of this. Like, yeah, long, well, I'm not sure. It's, it's probably it's, 300 feet, 400 <coughs> feet maybe from the mailboxes to the Blackberry Ridge Road. Um, and is that class four? Class four. That yeah. is class four. Anything after the mailboxes is class four until you get to the Blackberry Ridge Road, which turns okay. off. Um, I honestly don't know how many, how much more traffic this will create. Uh, that's something that maybe the conservation can answer and what they expect for, for additional traffic. Um, um, as uh, actually back to what John was saying, um, there's, there's ability to upgrade that road and then the town would take it over. And it has to come up to a certain criteria, which I believe it's adding gravel would be the most expensive feature of that. You mean the private road to make it class that four? Is, no, just to extend the extend the class four car. Um, okay. So then it would go beyond the Black Bay Ridge Road. Um, but that was also part of the deal was that it could be upgraded if the developer paid for the gravel, paid for, for the upgrades. So that, you know, that's, I know that's gonna create a whole lot more complication, but uh, it's something that maybe we could look at because his concern is correct. There might be more traffic and um, is it fair for him for the development the people that live in this development to pay for the maintenance mm -hmm. and then the public is allowed to use it. Yeah, so he's got a legitimate point. Yeah, and, fair question. 
I think it's certainly something that we can work on. Yeah. Okay. You got anything else, Tom? Yes, and, and thank you, Alfred, for, for addressing my concern. Um, this is more of a suggestion, an open question. Um, you know, there is the parking lot currently on Pekin Road, and the Class 4 road goes from Pekin Road to Chapin Road, cutting through the town forest. Uh, as you know, Stephanie expressed before, it does cross over some private land as well as a washed out ravine. But I'm just curious to know if the Conservation Committee is thinking of spending funds on allowing access to this town forest, if there is any consideration of using funds to you know, uh, make that trail more accessible where there's currently existing parking. I guess, is that a question for this Conservation Commission, Tom? Uh, yes, yes, if, if Stephanie would, is, uh, would like to, or if Stephanie has considered that, or if the select board, um, is aware of any concerns um, due to, I believe that road is owned by the town, um, but then it, it crosses, and I know Stephanie expressed some concern about how it crosses over private land, so I'm just not sure about how all that uh, would work out. It doesn't cross well, private the land. Cl the the class four, as it continues through and past this, turn this right. proposed turnaround, that's where it goes across private land. But that's, well, and so does Chapin Road for that matter. And so, that's right. Every road it's, goes it's through like Singleton Road oh, across okay. private land. I see. So I was not every, every road. It, that's right. All right. I thought it was the like town that. forest is town land that the class four goes through. Yeah. But then it leaves the town forest property, and then on its way to Pekin Book Road, and that little stretch there is private land either side of it, and okay, it's a so right of way like, like every town. Like, okay. All right. I, they keep saying private land, so it makes me but, think it's well, something that's that it's actually an accurate statement. Um, but okay. it can be confusing to understand. So, Stephanie, when is it likely that the um, survey will be done? Because that will help us, right? Can't hear you. Are you on mute? Yeah, I know. You muted me. <laughs> Not. <laughs> we, um, I don't think it, I think Paul said it doesn't really need to survey because, um, I don't think, I think what he said was, he went out there, he said, there's not really a question of where the property boundaries are. It's not really a question. The property boundaries are clear, according to Paul. Uh, as I recall, that's what he said. Um, and so, um, if it runs along, you know, at, at that part where we are looking at the parking area, it just runs, the, it run, the road runs on the edge of the forest. Let me put it that way. So it runs on the edge of the forest. Um, the, uh, the thing we did talk about it i think tom brought it up before and we talked about it with him and with alfred um who thinks i thought alfred said it would be really really expensive to upgrade that to upgrade that um into something that's passable i mean it's a ravine that collapsed and um you know it just you know that plus the fact that you have to walk a distance just to get in the town forest um, just didn't seem worth it. And that was sort of what we talked about. And as I recall, we talked about it with Alfie who said, yeah, it's, it's like a big deal upgrading that road. We also talked about um, concerns about motor vehicles going you know, into the forest, but there's a little parking area there. And um, what I understand is, because Alfred explained it to me, is that we can't, the town can't control, can't prevent access on a class four road, but it could be downgraded to a trail, in which case uh, motor vehicle access could be prohibited. And that's certainly something that we would probably uh, support. Moving this along, because we're getting behind schedule quite a bit here. Sharon and then Danielle, you'll have one last chance to make a there's, there's Grace too. No, Grace is here. Oh, okay. So I just want to, I want to make sure that I understood the conversation a couple of minutes ago around the session that's class four and the session, the session we call calling private. 
it's it's a is it a public right of way the the, the class four becomes a public right of way across private land right. just like any the whole class four is just like any other road in town okay. sure that i get but but the private the private that's what i was confused on right and it's just like any it's other a private road it's a public road that right. comes off that, that so that's the, that's the the term that I think that we need to remember is it's a public right of way. Right. But the, the road itself is not a private road. It's a public oh, right of right. way right. across private land. That's, that's completely that's right. normal thing. So, right. So right. we got to disassociate the word private. Right. And that's yes. from right. the public right, right of way. Right. And, okay. and thank you. The landowners keep using private, but it's really it's public. a public right of way right. across right. private land. Like every road is. Like every like every road in town. Okay, Danielle, you got, a, you got a couple minutes to comment, and then I'm going to circle back to the board because I want to come up with next steps, plan stuff. So we live um, basically on the si other side of where that class four road is, where they're basically the neighboring there. And I worry about the trash. I worry about the liability. Um, where they access it right now from um, Pekin is a mess. Who's gonna, who is going to maintain keeping that cleared up? Is that gonna be a liability for us neighbors? Um, there's so much water in through there. If, I mean, what if somebody's in the woods on the trail and you know goes on our side of it and gets hurt? I, I can, I have a <laughs> Danielle. Can hear you really, really loud. So okay. Your mic down. All right. Is that better? Okay, that's better. Thank you. Okay. Our concern, biggest concern, is the liability. Um, there's a lot of water and stuff down through there. Um, we are own land that's on the other side of that. And my concern is the type of traffic that this is going to attract, the type of people that it's going to attract. If somebody's walking through there and, you know, wanders onto our side and gets hurt, who's going to be liable for that? Because I do not want that liability. I mean, it's, I don't know that it's any different than walking on any other road in town, is it? Right. It's no different than walking on any other road in town. It happens to be a class four road. So if they wander onto our side of it? Well, just the same as if they live on Main Canoli Road. If somebody's walking down the road and they fall and end up on my property, no, no, I'm I, guess our, I guess my biggest concern is the, the type of people that this is going to attract in there. I don't understand what that means. Just based on experience, we have another town forest. The type of people that have been utilizing that are folks who are outdoors oriented, not drunken drinkers like we've seen up at Number Ten Pond. It's who are like like to ride mountain bikes, birders with binoculars, nature freaks, and frankly, uh, our other town forest that has a map trail and everything else. We'd like to see more use. It's underutilized, if anything. I, I frankly, I, I think we're going to make an investment. I think you're not going to see many people showing up. Sorry, Stephanie. I just think that we have so much in terms of open land and woodland and opportunity uh, that people aren't going to. I, I know I'm not going to say I'm going to go hike that woods over there. I just hike the woods across the street in my neighbor's woods. I don't think you're going to see much of I say you were wrong, John, six years from now, but I don't see that as an extreme worry. Um, I think the, the biggest thing is having, you know, we have a daughter here that's that I concerned about. We have our own trails. You know, we've, you know, we've got our own trails on our own side. You know, it, it's an uncomfortable feeling. Um, and I guess I would want to see what's the cost difference going to be making it accessible where peak and brook is or doing it from here what's the difference in cost going to be trail to trail you can't walk through it you should be up hiking i think it's pretty sandy there it would be like difficult to maintain then you're going to see problems 
options. Now you're going to see four wheelers cutting through and people cutting through with mud trucks on many weeks. Uh, again, in the road is a road that people are going to go to that forest for one reason only. They're not going to use it as a cut through or a shortcut to, to add on that. Right. Being broke. Uh, if we open that up, that is likely what will happen. It will become a shortcut, and you're going to see a lot of traffic. And also, on your private land, you can find your private land if you have trails. I'm sorry, I didn't catch on. There we go. On the road right now, anybody can travel that. It's already a town road. It's already a town road. It's putting in a parking area for it. And it's for old folks, frankly. That's what the parking area is for. The folks on mountain bikes ride their mountain bike in, and they, they're already doing it if they're interested. Okay, so it's 8 o'clock, and we have the backup. So I guess the process, I guess, that one is just like, a slight visit. Sure. Um, a slight visit. And then I guess I'd like to see a plan from a for Alfred and the Conservation Commission to work together to come up with a plan of what this would look like, what it would cost, do we want to downgrade it from a class four road to a trail? To limit use by motor vehicles. Right, so yeah, so that, you know, wouldn't be used by ATVs and things like that, and then come back to the board with a plan. And would that be the specific if, if we were to do a site visit, is that what we're assessing? I guess I just want to see where this place is. I mean, I can go drive down there myself. I don't have to do that. that. You, know, you can, yeah, we can go look at it if we're curious, but is there a specific issue that the select board is assessing? Well, if we were going to downgrade and reclassify the road, then we have to trail, then we would do that. So we could kill two birds with one stone. Right. Or we could wait for the, so the Conservation Commission to make that recommendation. Yeah. That right. Now, yeah. so the Conservation Commission, I don't know when you're meeting next, but could you and get together with Alfred and come up with a plan and get back to the board? Mm -hmm. Plan and recommendations. Right. right. One of one that's coming up is should it be downgraded? Yeah, I think I just said something about downgrading it to a trail. Yeah. Um, and whatever else you think we need to have to make this decision. And well, then let us and then let us know when you're ready to have it back on the agenda with the information. Well, what else do you need to know besides the cost, the actual uh, physical location of where the parking area would be, I guess, with specificity, although we pretty much know. Um, some kind of a some kind of a drawing with what the plan is that um, Paul Hannon has stated that we don't need a survey, just so we have documentation in the well, record. Well, and the Conservation Commission clearly in their mind's eye has a sense, an idea for what they want to see. This, they anticipate this this work effort is going to lead to right like the level of utilization and the folks who might utilize it and might park i know i have my opinion about it might be but it might be very different than what and maybe i spoke out of turn stephanie uh, about who you anticipate to be utilizing maybe the conservation commission is going to do nature walks periodically i don't know but oh, yeah. um, if we're going to have that distilled down so the neighborhood has a better understanding of what you're, you're seeking to do here? Yeah, I mean, it puts we everybody talked, on notice with what the project is. We talked about this. Um, it's really the trails committee that has the experience with the trails in town. And I had already suggested to these folks that they contact the trails committee, talk to Tom Blatchley about what their experience has been, because the Conservation Commission is doesn't normally develop trails. You know, we've worked over the years, we've developed some trails a little bit in, or identified trails in the Blisstown Forest, but it's the, we're working with the Trails Committee. So I just wanted to, you know, yeah, that's all good stuff, but mostly it's the Trails Committee and not us. Okay, well, somebody needs to take the lead. So and I don't know if anybody else has contact the Trails Committee. I also want to make another suggestion that the select board go out and look at it. You know, yourselves, it's really beautiful out there. You know, go out, 
I don't want to do that. We just talked about that, but we need to wrap this up because we're way behind. This is taking away more time than I thought it yeah. would. So, so I'm gonna so a conservation commission. I'm gonna have you guys take the lead if you need to consult with the trails committee. Um, come up with working with Alfred. We need to have a plan. We could actually one thing we could do is ask the trails committee to watch tonight's movie from what seven forty to eight. So, yeah, we can and, and collaborate with the conservation commission and come back. What on the ninth or on no on, on the, next the, one? the next one? Katie, can you put that in the minutes, please? And and Stephanie, when you were recapping, Denise, even though we talked about it, I didn't hear the question come from Stephanie. Did you hear us talking about the question of whether the public right of way? should be downgraded to a trail. No, whether the class four road should be downgraded to a trail. It's the- Which is a public right of way. Which is- Just the board. Yeah. Public right of way. Well, so we were distinguishing the part, okay. Yes, it's all public right of way. It's all class four all the way through the Pekin Road. It's all class four. It's all so there is no such thing as even a something else that's well, okay. there's, yeah, I think that what private, there is no such thing. No, yeah, I think what okay. confused yeah, they, you, Shannon, was they, they, that they I never said that. Private. There is a private road, but it goes off from the I, class four. I get that. I thought there was something sort of mountain bike only ish yeah. that was being called. No. That's, okay. There's a washout, and so it's, it's caused people not to go okay. through there. So I made a note. I will email Tom Latchley. Right, he's our chair. Ask him to please watch the movie tonight from what seven forty seems about right. Seven thirty. All right, uh, to eight to understand the discussion about Chapin Chapin Forest and the trails slash yeah, okay. and to coordinate with the conservation commission. Okay, and then the next second meeting of August is when we want to talk about it again. Yep, for. Only 15 minutes. 15 minutes. minutes. Yep. Got it. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ann Hill Road. Man, Hello. Hi, Grace. How's it going? How about you? <laughs> Fine. Good. Um, so I just wanted to uh, attend tonight and just provide a quick update on, you know, funding options for this culvert. Um, I talked with Rick over the phone last week, or maybe this week, the days all blur together. Um, so we talked about the BRIC program, which is a new FEMA grant program that started last year. Um, and my recommendation, you know, you don't need to decide anything tonight. Um, the application doesn't come out until the end of this month or early next month, um, but I think it would be, you know, a good application to go after, and this would be funding a scoping study, so it would be building off of what you all have already done, looking at the brook and looking at alternatives um, for the town hall and for the culvert, and it will kind of build on that and just uh, develop an alternatives analysis for, you know, what are some alternatives for upsizing the culvert, and then it would develop some concept designs for the preferred alternative. So this would be funded through FEMA, through their BRIC program. Um, it would require a 25% match, but you wouldn't need to have the match identified at the time that you apply. You would just need to sign a letter saying, you know, we commit to providing a match. Um, so that's something that you- I think it could be in kind, yes. So I'll confirm Katie, that. Hang on just a minute. I'm sorry to interrupt. Katie, I've got the this memo called up. Can anybody see it on Zoom? Can you see the memo? No. Do you want to screen share it, Denise, or should I find it? Um, okay. I got it. Cool. I just need to figure out how I get back there. Um it's not letting me do anything. Hmm. 
Well, go ahead. Okay. In, in the essence of time, Katie, why don't you just call it up because it's not working. Okay. Yeah. Almost. So yep. sorry, Grace. So you said you in your memo, you're telling us that option one is like the one you would recommend. Yeah. So there, there are a couple different kinds of projects you can apply for under this program. The one I'm recommending is the scoping project, um, because the other two options they basically just require like a lot more information than the town has at this point. Like option two and option three, you would have to do a benefit cost analysis, which is super complex and it requires, you know, it requires a more uh, complex understanding of, you know, the alternatives and what you would be looking to do. So the idea here is that you would do a, a scoping study first then you would get all that information through that scoping study that you would then use in another application to fund the actual culvert replacement or upsizing, if that makes sense. Grace, can I say, uh, Denise found the memo, she, I just saw this tonight, and it was from back in 2018, and they had had, um, I think, Beachlands do a, Doug Newton do uh, an estimate on that replacement and it, and for, to replace that it was around the three hundred thousand dollars but they also said that that you know the work on the town hall basically put that out of the bca since that they raised that mm. it's basically to mitigate the flood damage and the so the any bca or any damage mitigation would basically be road and would it would it be significant enough to be able to justify that in that BCA? That would be the question. Are we running down? A, right. We by doing this, are we running down a blind alley? You know, that's yeah. Right. That's a good question. That's a good question that I I don't have the answer to. But you know, yeah, that's a good question. That's something I can think about because it certainly wouldn't be you know cost effective to do this project and then discover that the BCA. So FEMA requires, for context, FEMA requires, you know, a certain score on that benefit cost analysis to allow them to give the go ahead to actually, you know, fund implementation of the culvert. But what I would say is that, you know, there are other funding sources that the town could look into to fund the upsizing of the culvert in the future. So you don't necessarily, you know, you're not necessarily committing to using FEMA for all stages of the project. Um, so FEMA would require a BCA to, you know, fund the, the implementation, but not all funding sources would. So then the scoping we would need, yeah, we're going to need that for any sort of Right. Yeah. yeah. That's the first step. I yeah. was just, just wondering on that particular grant, you know, for the brick, I mean, this whole, uh, you know, but yeah, we want, if we do that, this turns into a broader brush scoping study to really develop alternatives and then a preferred alternative and then we mm -hmm. the question is on that can we get the funding for can we get planning funding for this for scoping you know through the exact you know without without that without that, that uh bca in place sorry can you repeat that question can we get uh i mean should we since we we may not, it looks unlikely that we'll get a benefit cost level of, you know, that we would earn one of the, uh, the brick funding. I mean, can we do this scoping study and have that still funded? Uh, like, are you saying, can you do a FEMA, can you apply for a FEMA grant now, even if you don't necessarily want to use FEMA in the future? To move forward on this, like if we decide to do this, or do this scoping study, we're going to be applying for kind of uh, planning, planning money to do that, correct? So, yeah, yeah. 
Is that going to be contingent on getting a successful BCA? Or, or no, or? because the whole, no, because the whole, that's a good question though. So the whole intention of, you know, the scoping is to gather all of that information, but FEMA doesn't, you know, part of the scope of this project application would be, you know, developing that BCA. So FEMA doesn't need to see any kind of BCA information in this application. That comes after the scoping. So it's not contingent. Execution. Yeah. Okay. I'm just making sure that wouldn't be contingent. On right. Yeah. Forward. Okay. So when Rick or Grace, when do we have to make a decision? You said we didn't need to make a decision tonight because but it says late summer we're getting close to late summer right yeah i wouldn't say you need to make a decision tonight this was more just for your information the application is probably going to be released late august i'm i'm guessing probably closer to early september and then the applications are actually due to vem in january but what we would need is kind of the go ahead from the select board you know once the application is out I can review it and send you all some information on what exactly would be required. And then maybe the select board can meet again and actually, you know, give the go ahead. And then that would be needed to kind of get the ball rolling, set it up in the FEMA online system um, and all of that. So I would say mid late September would probably be a good time to aim to take this up again and then maybe just give the go ahead or you know, make the decision at that point. I think we'll, I would suggest that we leave it to you and Rick to figure this out and get back to us when we need to yeah. put it on the agenda again. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is the email for you in 2008, so yeah. what I found. Um, yeah, that sounds okay. good. Late September and, well. and also, um, let's not forget to include Alfred. Right? Yeah, no be it. So late September, it'll be here with a with a clear. Okay, here it is. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, that'll give me time to look at what would actually be required, and then Rick and I can talk about you know what the level of effort would be for the application. The good thing, yeah, the good thing is that the Peak and Brook you know, the town hall study that was done in 2018 or maybe a little bit before that, it has a ton of information that can be added into the application. So, you know, a lot of what you need is already there. Do you have this or do you want me to scan it and email it to you? you scan it over us? Yeah. yeah. Right. I want, yeah, great. It's usually a copy of that too. Well, okay. Not, if you don't have a copy of that. I think the whole thing is kind of fun. not all of them. This is Okay. Thank you, Grace. Yeah. All Thank right. you. All right. Moving right Bye. along. Hey, Albert, you wanted to, you asked me to put this on the accrue hourly rate. Yeah, I'm just wondering what I can offer a new employee in the chance that one comes along. Well, you know what? Based on experience. Based on experience. I don't know. We don't. We don't have hired, a good framework yet. When you hired Tyler, he had experience driving stuff on the farm and right. and all that. And when you hired Jacob, he didn't have any experience. Right. So and Jacob didn't have a CDL. Right. Tyler came with CDL. Yeah. No, Tyler. No, Jacob did have. Oh, he did. Tyler, Tyler did not. Tyler. Right. Okay. So I remember he, he, it. he obtained it very soon after. Right. Okay. Using our equipment. And this is something that we're continuing to work on is looking at things to do with the road crew, salary, benefits, those kinds of things. We talked about having a committee with some very set and clear criteria to review. And so the select board hasn't had a chance to meet to review some of the criteria and you know, look at who would be on the committee. He would be obviously part of the committee. Um, so I know it's hard right now. I mean, well, if you what if what if we provide Alfred a range that he can decide between yeah. what, what was the lowest we started? Jacob probably started the lowest. No, uh, Jacob was a sixteen when he started. Okay. So Tyler was eighteen when he started. But that's sixteen hours 
but uh, just because of inflationary adjustments or the loss of the yields this year. So yeah. if we were to start now, considering those percent increases due to the cost of living adjustment, more or less, um, what would that be? That would be the base, and then there might be some range above we could authorize you to work within. I mean, if you hired somebody in and they ended up starting at a higher wage than what Tyler's currently making, yeah. that's that's going to be a problem, right? That's going to be. That's why I'm bringing it up because right. it's going right. to, no, it, it is going to be a problem. <clears throat> it's going to, you know. And also Bruce. I mean, Bruce has a fair amount of experience, yeah. and, and certainly if I start somebody out more than him, even if he's got the same amount of experience, the new guy, right. it's still going to yeah, rob Bruce the wrong way. And I just think, you know, I, I just want to know so well, I can be prepared to tell a potential employee right. I mean, uh, what I can right offer. Now. It should be below Tyler. And so between what Jacob's starting wage should be and Added the little Tyler to it. Right. So, I, so Tyler is about 18 and some change. Um, he was bumped to 1850. So, um, so I guess, you know, this gets back to the select board wanting to really delve in and look at some other towns and well, I, I need a range. I mean, because they were given that if, um, right. It was eighteen to twenty the last time. That's what that's what the board had given me or a couple of Okay, before. currently Bruce makes. I just want to double check that, and if it's eighteen or twenty, then I'll go with that. And but that's what we're going to get for an employee. You're going to get an eighteen or twenty dollar man. And that's it's becoming harder and harder to find. I've heard it's really people hard. people yeah. that are that have this experience, have this interest to come and work for eighteen dollars an hour. So we were very lucky when we got Tyler. So yeah. the question you're raising now, Alfred, fits into a, a, a different framework than is what is the conversation we're having right now. But what Denise just said, right? We're, we are we are not, and you know us well enough to know we're not going to answer that kind of a question on the fly. You have very recent experience in hearing from us um, with hiring a person, but and your 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 questions scream for the fact that we need a stronger system that you feel comfortable that we have authorized you to work within. But we don't have that system answer right now. You have the range that you've heard. What if, what if we hired um, Jake about a few years ago up to, you know, whatever we talked about for Tyler, it's kind of roughly where we are um, for this hire without making any more of a commitment than that. Yeah. So we're hoping so to get this. So I one. will verify what Tyler is making right now, and that's as high as I can go. No matter what experience I have. I mean, if I find a guy that's loud snow and he's been in this business before, um, I mean, I'm still, I mean, can I at least have the option of coming and talk to you and saying, look, yeah. I got this guy that's, that's interested, but he's not going to come for, for yeah. 1820. Yes. He wants yeah. 21. I mean, we that's happening. That's, that's, I've right. got that on the plate. That means what we have to do is get, we have to get this a priority for us to get the right. wage thing to yeah. the dollar yeah. so that we can get this back in scale. Yes. Even if we yeah. don't get some of the other information gathered, this will be a top priority in the minutes. The selector will look at the hiring. So this road crew's salaries and hourly rates and all those good hourly things. Yeah. And I know that well, I've been working on VLCT. There is a ton of road type yeah. jobs available. available. Yeah. There's Nobody all over the place. Nobody, not many want to do this job. It's, it's, all, it's, it's in all the trades. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, it's, it's across the board. With the the job down space, 14 bucks an hour. You know? It's hard to. Yeah. Well, I mean, oh, they're, they're advertising yeah. for flaggers. Flaggers yeah. to stand out beside the road with a flag in your hand. They're they're paying eighteen dollars an hour. No. you have very little experience to run a flag. Right. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Nothing against flaggers. They're a very important job. Right. But they don't have a CDL license. They don't have equipment experience. They don't have, they don't have all this that. stuff that is required for this job. Right. No, I get it. So I feel like we really need to hustle on this because yep. winter's coming and yep. we are very short. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I'm just urging you to. Yeah, no, I, we hear you loud and clear because, like so, you said, I've been looking at stuff online and it's right. crazy. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, I can see you back there. You guys at some place where I can see you reach your hand. So, in order to expedite, if we do actually get a candidate, and there is a financial decision that has to be made by the select board. You can't wait for the next meeting or two weeks later. It needs to be an immediate decision. So can you set up a process for Alfred to have a good candidate? Can you get we set it okay? Can you guys we set it in an immediate fashion? That's why we just said it's going to arrange. But maybe the arrange is not in. Well, if you can. Well, and that, that may be it. And I think you ought to be flexible because we are, I think it's a summer crisis situation. We, but when you heard the struggle, we have other employees that are currently making. No, I understand. So we have to rapidly right. move. So again, that may be so like you guys rapidly move. We have to do this quickly. Right. And we understand that's a conversation we're having right now. And I understand that. I just want to. And if, Alfred, and if, Alfred, if Alfred comes to us and says, I got to do this right now, we can have an emergency meeting. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Can we do to prepared to, to react? Yeah. Can we to sweeten this pot a little bit? What if we use the hiring bonuses? I mean, our, our, our sign on bonuses. Sign I see on. there there was a lot of those. A lot of them. It's the same issue that Alfred brought up with the area of the other guys. Right. I mean, it if is, we give them all range, we already have set up. No we already bonuses. have some issues with with some of that. And if we start, if we give a new person a hiring bonus and these other folks haven't received a bonus. Right. So we gotta make we will make this needs to be a top priority for sure. Yeah. 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 And and I want to say the same thing we said uh, when we were hiring before that there's we have grand visions as we discussed earlier about how we wanna be working with the with the highway crew. And into see integration with conservation commission and other pieces. You've heard us talk about as you're hiring Alfred, making sure that you are setting clear expectations and not over over promising based on. Well, that's why I brought it to the board. Well, but you're answers. talking about well, money, and I'm talking about other things. Okay. Um, the hours. The hours, the schedule, the, the eating, lunch, while you're in the driving later, you know, some of those things that, that seem to be part of the culture and, and we've heard maybe are things that were set as an expectation coming in and we've, we asked you last time and I'm not saying you did, I'm just reminding, don't, don't <laughs> be careful about right. that. Right, well, again, that's another thing that needs to be expedited because mm -hmm. I'm hiring new people Right, but you and I need to, to know what your expectations are if they're changing from what I am accustomed to. Alfred, we have said that over and over. Do not hire with those expectations on the table. Do not make those promises as part of the hiring. We have been crystal clear about that before. Okay. Absolutely. But you're not telling me what the changes are. So I'm supposed to tell this new employee, you know, well, I think there's stuff going to be changing. Just be ready. I mean, what do you want me to tell this new employee? So what do you tell, what do you tell employees? It's. I tell them what we, place. what's in place now. What is going okay, so, on right so now? Tell us what you I mean, that's our, that's our well, schedule. So we work seven to four. You guys got to give me direction. I can't make up your mind. I can't read your mind. Can I just if you're asking that. to make changes, make the change okay. and I'll follow it. Earlier you said something about interrupting and you just interrupted me. So tell us what it is that you tell employees now about what they can expect if they come to work for the town of Calus. 40 hour a week, do they get what time, what, what are the hours? Exactly what, they, what it is. I mean, there's six, okay, to, it's six, to, six to four, four days, four days a week, 10 hours. 
there are times that you're going to have to come in and do if there's an emergency or a situation. There's there's 12 days of sick time. There's uh, vacation. I know I know that like the back of my hand. And what, what and do you I tell them about? What do you tell them about um, the winter? Operations. They know they're going to probably be on call. Absolutely. And they sign, that's why we can't get anybody to sign up because they don't want to come to work at two in the morning. I know. And what do you tell them about lunch? Lunch is a half an hour. And I've been telling them as it is. I mean, we've only I've only hired one person since any of this has started. So right. Okay. Uh, so they know that they don't get to leave early by working for well, lunch. See, the issue is no, it's the other guys are all doing six to four. We haven't done it. We had that conversation in the union discussion. That was our term that if that contract was finalized, that would have been a clause in there that that, would have, that shift didn't happen. Right, right. It didn't that, happen, folks. None no. of the pay scale happened. Nothing happened. That contract never happened. That just, it's as if that discussion never happened. Totally well, understand that. That I totally understand that. That doesn't mean that Alfred doesn't change how he talks about what kind of commitment the town, because you've heard it over and over. For, I've been on the board for. Right, I've heard that there's been some changes, Sharon, but I no. don't know what those changes are. Alfred, we haven't made changes. We've told you, and there's, there's memos from before I was even on the board saying the board doesn't like that schedule. Stop it, Alfred. Back it off. Change it up. And continually, 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 we hear from the crew that, that that's an expectation and that's part of what the promise to them when they're hired. And I'm saying that, that that message that comes from you and how strongly you set that message should change. Because you, you heard us over and over and over saying, we don't like that, we want more flexibility. Okay, so. Then make the change and I'll follow it. It's that simple. Just make the change. You well, guys are in the, in the position to make a decision. Make a decision and I'll follow it. I'm not gonna tell somebody something out of the cloud, okay? It's a cloud, it's a dream of the select board that we don't have, we don't pay you guys lunch. It's a dream that we that don't, we happen. cut down on overtime. All of this stuff, stop it, it's true. It's it's something in you guys' imagination and, and I need to know what you want to do. All right, you need Just to make a decision that. and tell me. I'll call the fact that we negotiated it. Doesn't it's an acknowledgement. It. It's an acknowledgement that, that that's the status quo. Whether we like it or not, I'm not going to mention the road commissioner that came up with this, but that came up and it was tolerated by every iteration of this select board. It was enough of an issue that we it became an issue at the negotiating table. The negotiations fell apart, as we all know, and we are still at status quo, right. which is what it's been. Right. It's, uh, I'm, I'm with Alfred on this one, guys. Yeah, no, we need and I'm the one who's very concerned. I don't like the incorporated lunch. But I'm with him on this because we didn't make a change. No, we didn't. We, we complained, but we didn't take a vote. No. And, you know, frankly, I, I think we need to, I've said this in private conversations to each of you, in different phone conversations, I think we need to get off the freaking dime and implement a new salary schedule. It's freaking August. You know, the negotiations are a side thing. We could have done all that stuff on our own. Yeah. And if we really believe it, if we came to basically agreement with the terms of that contract, and we think that's fair and balanced, we can implement the contract terms right now as written without a union. Yeah. So I don't understand what we're doing. I, I, this is my one of my greatest frustrations here, and, and maybe I haven't been. I need to be more up front with my. I need to communicate better. But this is frustrating me. I, I said it. There's nothing stopping us from implementing those terms. Nothing except us. We are we are an expert to support, and myself included, in tripping over ourselves. And uh, well, we make everything available. Maybe and, it, and it's. Safe. Falling on him. Well, because he's out there dealing with the blowback, and we show up and, and, say, no, and you can't postulate and think and ponder and worry. And okay, the question right. is uh, too, I mean, were the terms of the contract, they were projected as 
No, no, no. The, 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 contract has no, the contract has nothing to do with it. I'm talking about wait a minute. Negotiations they kind of fell apart when right. you walked away with this. Right. The membership wouldn't go with what was agreed upon. So that's right. but, that. but we negotiated with the union in good faith we did. and we reached an accord with the union and the last thing was ratification. Right. And that's so exactly. the union came, moved, we moved, and the experts at the table agreed that this was a reasonable compromise, a reasonable settlement that provided a benefit to the town and the town's employees that was equitable. Okay. And it doesn't matter if they ratified it or not. We can implement those terms, because now there's no union. We can implement anything we want. We can give them $5,000 an hour if we want. We can give them pay cuts to $4 uh, an hour. I'm just we have that. I'm not I'm talking about the mumbo jumbo of the contract. What I'm talking about here is the ability to hire somebody. That's right, right, and that contract, that, the contract, that, that, was, that, people are gonna come that contract, that was a big part of, for both sides yeah. at the table, and that contract was styled so that we would be better able, and the salary yeah. scale was styled so we'd be better able to hire people, that people would want to come here and work. Okay, so that was why we did it. So here's a, here's and that's what I'm saying. Let's here's just a do thought it. I'm agreeing with you. Mostly. You don't have to. No, I do. I do agree. I think this is, we've got to get off the stick. We've got to make this decision. I propose that we figure out a date this week to look at the salary schedule as proposed by the union negotiations so that we can get this done so that Alfred has something to work with because it's yeah. not fair to not know. Hang, right. hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't, I don't agree with that. We have said several times, and Denise, you and I put time on our calendars, that we are going to, that's, that's to do the committee thing, but I think just benchmarking, which is different. That's, so we need something we now, need something Sharon. Now. This is like we need, two we, years. We, we can do this whole other piece of it still on Thursday to talk about that. I just think we need to come up with some kind of a salary schedule we can just have a special meeting or continue this meeting and vote to implement if, the changes. If, that if that schedule and that grid works out that it's short of what that committee sends it, it's you're still behind the game. We can then can do more. upgrade the grid. We, we figure out the percentage and everything moves. I, it's, it's simple stuff. I just, I just, I'm going to say it out loud. I don't want to lose another man from our road crew. And we are this close, so I'm not happy. Right. I, I and if that happens, Sharon, now we've got a brand new crew going into the winter. These are two hundred thousand dollar trucks. These people are driving. I don't want a rookie crew. I don't want to be able to tr have to train three more guys. I'm sorry, it's a lot of work. Please okay. do something. It's only a little bit of money. Okay. I saved the town. The budget saved a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars last year. Last budget. Cut into that if you got to. Make your road crew happy, please. Okay. Because so, it's not working the way it is right now. So, so I, I hear you and I appreciate that. What I'm uncomfortable with is that we're articulating in public what we're going to commit to as, as as what we're going to talk about implementing the union when we didn't when. It's my it opinion. Is. It's just my opinion, Sharon. Okay. So we're talking we about have been doing everything in private because that's a union negotiation. That's a respect thing. But okay. is that also? creates blowback. The, the crew is antsy, they're losing guys, we can't find guys. His job is a difficult job, it's now a miserable job. Um, you know, I, I don't want to have to go to CEO and drive a truck to keep the town going. I mean, because Alfred takes off and we lose everybody. That could happen in one day. I'm looking at a That's just reality. You look at what the pay is out I'm looking at it. Hey, can I finish? I'm sorry. I'm looking at us meeting just to look at the pay thing, not anything else, just the pay piece, and seeing what we can do based on our negotiations, which we agreed to those pay scales, or the pay amounts, or whatever you want to call it. So we have a half an hour special meeting. We can vote on it. If you don't want to vote in favor, you don't have to. Um, oh, yeah, let's do that. So what are folks' calendars? And I just want to also say, that pay grid was arrived before the COVID increases came. 
which are massive. Mm -hmm. Anyone's going food shopping, they're massive. Wow. They're not incremental, they're massive. We are at 5%, 5 plus percent inflation. Buy, I can't afford to buy a sheet of plywood. It's $120 mm -hmm. to buy Advantech last I checked. I'm hoping it's come down. I ground to a halt on my barn project. This is the reality. Carpenters are a hundred bucks in Chittenden County an hour. I'm seeing and you can't get them. I'm seeing forty percent increases in the state contract costs just because okay. it's, it's, can we, it's nuts. Can we meet yeah. tomorrow night at seven here? We can continue this meeting. Or or six. I, I could do Wednesday night, I can't do Wednesday. I can't I have a no, I have I Wednesday night board meeting something else. Well if I have clients tomorrow night. Let's do Thursday. Thursday, what time? I can't because I've, I've got, and the next day I'm going into surgery, so I've got, I may be done with Jesus. What about tomorrow during the day? No, I'm going to be, I don't know. Can you do Zoom? I, I, I think I can make it by seven. And if not, I'll pull over and I'll remote in. That's all. Just okay. make sure we have a remote one. Can you do yeah. tomorrow night, Rick? I can do tomorrow night. Let's do that. Let's do that. Can we do it? We yeah. can do a chat. No. I can't, though. No. Oh, you can't? Mark will, be, Mark, will be, Mark will be back. You know, sure. Mark will be back already. Yeah. Bring it to next Monday. Wait till yeah, next Monday. That's another, that's another week. I mean, I think. Oh, okay. I thought this I mean, I mean, the people aren't knocking my door down to, oh, okay. to look for a job. Okay. But let's do if it on they Monday. do. Okay. The night I, that I can wait till Monday if that works. If I can remote it, if I can remote it, I'm going to put it that way. I just I've, don't I've actually gone on Monday. All right, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, three people, yeah. even if it's just as many. No. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Just for the vote. It's up to you. It's up to you. We're we'll set it up by Zoom, so if you want to remote in, then you want to remote in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I think <laughs> Mark, he's pretty, he's pretty much knows he can't do anything else on Monday nights. So, yeah, okay, so Monday, Monday night, seven o'clock here. Here, it's and one item, nothing gets added. Right, and I'm going to suggest that we continue this meeting instead of okay. having to do another whole agenda. Okay, so I should invite the guys or not? Wait, was this on the agenda? Was this well, the if this was kind of. I don't think it was on the agenda. Yeah. This is on the agenda. Salary. So consideration of road salary rate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Continue it. Yeah. But, I don't I don't know that that would be the best idea. Okay. I'm just asking. I will yeah, say I think it up. this is a management select board. It's not a negotiation. It's not a negotiation. Yeah. Well, we, we tried that. It didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> well they tried it. You'll you'll be here right. with us and we'll make the decision. Fair okay, point. we need to move on because it's quarter of nine and we still have a couple more things we need to do. Yeah. Um, so Gary Schultz and Jill Schultz have asked us to consider discontinuing their town highway seven. Um, and Katie, there's a document, there's a couple of things in the folder. There's the email from Gary and Jill. Um, I had previously supplied a history of this road with some minutes. I don't know which folder they're in at this time. And there's also a draft notice in tonight's folder, draft hearing notice. So we're not gonna be able to do all this tonight, but I wanted to put it on the board's radar that hopefully we can review the process and come up with a hearing date um, at our next regular meeting, which is August, not the ninth, what is it? The it is the ninth. 16th. Ninth. It is the ninth, the second to Monday. Oh, Monday. so you want to wait till the ninth to do this road group salary thing? I was no, thinking. I was hoping for yeah. a special meeting. Yeah, a special meeting, yeah. right, right. On, on the second. One item. Right. Yeah. So hopefully on the ninth, we can delve into to this on Highway 7 discontinuance. And you had mentioned something about discontinuing GAR road at the same time. Yeah. So I not discontinuing, no, reclassifying, trail. downgrading to a trail. trail. Okay, so we have this one to discontinue, 
and the one to do a trail. So we focus on that on the ninth. <coughs> Make sense? Okay, next up. Yes. Oh, okay. uh, I'm wondering if the uh, other buyer is going to be a We haven't had that happen. They would be one of our guests. We haven't started the process yet. Also, this is not strictly related to the conditions and the tax classifying. You classifying the tax follows as tax squares. Is there a isn't there a maximum right away width of grant? Yeah. And would that, that would that therefore involve giving up some right away? Hmm. If that's the case. I don't think that's the case. Sure. That's not right. Right. If, if, if it were the case, then the town might be stuck with the one yeah, that no, no. again. Yeah. Back to the last no, no. whatever. That's good. Yeah, I, that's a good thing for us to think about just checking out. But I don't think that's the case because we did it on that road off of Sand Hill. Yeah, I know. And I we didn't shrink the right road. I was never sure. We never shrunk it. It's the same boundary. I would remember. We did not shrink the boundary. We just want to classify what uses were allowed. That's all it did. Oh, okay. And that's we have the ability to even go back the other way. Like, as you said. Yeah. So, Katie, could you make a note of the minutes that we need to just double check on the extent of the road, the ancient road, the one ancient road that was adopted? One ancient road? Yeah. yeah, also, I think we specified that the right away would be wider than normal. Right. I'm just wondering if that follows the state statute. I don't know, we should check and see what the statute is. I, I, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that's once they're non secularists we own that right of way. We, we're not, we're not doing that. If you throw it up, you're going to have to check it out. But you're not changing the right, you're not giving that up. You're just changing your you're just, you're just referencing the statutes to the standard width of the trail. It's much narrower. Do you have that information? No, no, I don't. I, 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 I want to take that on. Okay. Um, we really should follow yeah. the statute. Yeah, right. no, absolutely. You can address the statute. Yeah, the whole procedure is mm -hmm. in the statute. That's right. And here's right. how I read it. Uh, yeah, that's good. Well, and there is a whole procedure for discontinuing the road, too. So that's what we were, that's what I was talking about tonight. But if you have <laughs> the other information, that would be real helpful. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll forget to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, fire department contract. Excuse me, Denise. Yes. I, I'm so sorry. I don't know who was talking and I couldn't hear any of the comments. And I heard you ask me to make a note of something, but I'm sorry I couldn't hear. It was Reed Charrington. He's talking about this, following the statute that applies to trails. And he is actually going to go and look it up and send it to us. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it, it, to put a fire point on that, Katie, we're, 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 one of the considerations, there are two roads we're having, we were discussing. One is yes. the Highway 7, as you know, and the other, and that would be the, the term, the colloquial term is throwing it up, discontinuing the road and relinquishing all town rights, right? And, and the rights, the rights of way, the rights that go along that are relinquished to the property owners that own the land under the road or abutting the road or whatever. We're also talking about reclassifying the pos prospect of should we reclassify GAR road and in that reclassification effort downgraded from what its current stat status is, that's a four, class four, and downgrading it to a trail, which would allow us, it would give us the tools to limit uh, certain types of utils, uses of the road uh, by the general public, not the landowners. The landowners maintain their rights of use, um, but uh, the general public would, we could constrain motor vehicles, for instance. Um, so Reed was concerned that in downgrading a class four to a trail, is there uh, the potential for us to wind up losing some of the, our right of way width? 
and he want, he's going to research that, and I'm going to look into it too. I don't think that's the case, but if it is, then we might want to reconsider that idea. Because at some point in time, GIR, where we might want to upgrade back to a four or a three. So. Thank you. And you can always email me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fire department contract. We need to finish this up and get back to Thank you, Reed. Thanks, Thank Reed. Thanks, Reed, for showing. Um, Katie, can you call up uh, our department stuff, please? I need another lesson, and this is not working with this share thing. Denise, do you want to stop share on yours and I'll I'll find stuff on mine? Yeah. Yeah, as soon as I stop share. Okay. Got it. Okay. Just a second. For some reason. So I can't make it work. Is this right? Uh, I don't see anything. Yes. So you all have the information sent over by the East Montpelier Select Board. They have basically agreed with to what we proposed. They did this. Um, they worded it a little differently, and I looked at it again today, and it seems to still meet our goal. This, the, dot, this, the, the stuff in red, as explained in Bruce's email, the stuff in red is what we proposed. The stuff in blue is the East Montpelier Select Board's changes to what we proposed. So it's still basically is saying the same thing, just in a different way. And no, it says this contract will be viewed. No, they say and shall not automatically renew more than two successive years. Right. We said. We um, said shall not automatically review, uh, renew. Itself for a succession of one year terms unless notice of non renewal. But we, that, but we didn't make a change to that because it's not in red. We're essentially just trying to get a two year window where they don't get the risk authorization. No, see up here where it says contract shall be one year commencing at midnight. Blah blah blah, and shall renew itself for successive one year terms unless notice shall be given in writing by one party no later than three months. We, it was five, now we're saying three, and they're agreeing. Oh, so okay, yeah, this is a further constraint. Okay, right. yeah, okay, sorry, Denise. Okay, and then further down, Katie. Hang on, though, so not. Effective September 2nd, the contract shall be reviewed by the parties at least every three years and shall not automatically renew more than two successive years. I don't know how to, I don't know how to square those together. If we're going to renew it every, if we're going to review it every three years and not automatically renew more than two successive years. Successive years. What do we do after two years? Wait a minute. No, that's no, it's not what it's saying. This these are one year contracts that renew automatically for a year and they're saying it, it, they were automatically renewing with no you know, no end date. And we asked for an extent a lesser amount of time to with a notice of one renewal. Yeah. And then, and we asked for every three years and not automatic renew. Right. So they're saying if they kind of took our language and did it a little backwards, they're saying instead of renew effective September 121, they're saying effective September 221. This contract shall be reviewed by the parties at least every three years and shall not automatically renew more than two successive years. We still have the option to give notice three months prior to the renewal date if we want to bring up some issues. So, so in other words, they shall not automatically renew more than two 
two successive years, remembering that it automatically renews every year. It's not right. saying it's not saying now we're going to think of it as a two year. You have, to, you have to take it together. Right. They're kind of they're kind of turning this into a four year process. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're they're limiting. They're saying the existing line says it renews every year. Right. It's a one year contract. And the the fire department's offered up. No. Well, yes, it offered. Or East Montpelier Select Board says, yeah, it renews every year automatically if we don't weigh in. However, you got, you're only going to get that that twice if we don't weigh in. And the third year, you're going to, whether or not we weigh in, we're going to have that, con if we miss the deadline, we're going to have that conversation. Right, so at least every three so, years. I still can't square shall not automatically renew more than two successive years. That That's one auto renew, two auto renew. Isn't that... So does that so bring the, you to three years? The third, you, the third year, you have to have a, con a conversation. Okay, I guess so. Yeah, that's, right. that's the way I'm interpreting it. Taken together. Yeah. Okay, I see that. Yeah. It's still, yeah. it's still puts us in the position where okay, we're stuck. We're reducing the set of operating budget, set of operating budget. No, you're not. We're not there yet. Okay. Okay. So, okay, if you scroll down to number six. Did you look at this one? I missed this one. I yeah, okay. If you look at number six, can you scroll down? Okay, the language in six is crossed out. So it's basically saying, it's saying after agreement on the operating budget is reached in accordance with paragraph five, which is this right. over here, um, East Montana Council shall support said agreement and endeavor to raise the amount of EMFD's operating budget, mm -hmm. the manner of presentation of EMFD's operating budget or an equal capital request will be at the discretion of each individual select board. And that's what we wanted. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they're not disagreeing yeah. with that. Yeah. And they're, they just put in a clause, you know, I don't have a problem with supporting. Yeah, well, yeah. of course, we each agree, agreement. of course we're gonna endeavor. Right. Well, what they're doing, we endeavor to choose. If, no. if, if, our, if, if I would say our, our, we put that as an article, we still have to be able to make yeah. this so No, we to no they're, they're saying when you go to town meeting, select board, you explain why you supported right. this proposal, right. Right. this yeah. proposed yeah. contract, and this budget yeah. and it goes along with it. We shouldn't go there and say, yeah, we negotiate that, but we don't support it. They're yeah. saying you guys, you should support it. And, right. and if they, and if they, and if they not, if the town's folks, if we choose to have it a, as a, a, a separately warned item, which is what we have, have content we're going to do, that we're not going to undermine in, in our discussions with yeah. the, our community, but the community just chooses to amend it. There's no reason we undermine it. The question is if they go, yeah, we, I, we do very, I really support it right now. Right. Uh, the question is if the powers are met in and put on budget and put it in. Right. If somebody gets on and screws people up. Right, they, they can do that. They can, but then we've got a we're bound by a contract. No, no, there's no contract. What's well, an agreement, right? It's a sign agreement. We agree on a budget contingent on the town vote. Meeting vote. Because they decide we don't we don't set budget. It's set, set by the, the um, electorate. We don't have the authority well, to en enter in a contract like well, that. Well, we were That's taking right. this okay. money out of our operating budget. Okay, so let me just let me just give you this. It's always out. It's always we right. include as a line item in our budget. Right it's, now, the fire department's budget is in our budget. Yeah, it's yeah. always been the prerogative of the voters to say. Pull it out. Well, yeah. So we it's could, always been that way. No, I, yeah. I think yeah. it comes down to what do we think the word endeavor means, and and yeah. you know, I think endeavor. Well, what Rick is saying is, we our our point of view has been, you know, basically, and and she'll try, you know, she'll try. And we want to be sure that nobody's interpreting that to mean we must. If the voters go for it, we're going to go there. 
means work toward. I know. Yeah, I think so too. I think so okay, too. To me, it sounds we should try. That's what it means. Yeah, that's okay. It sounds like to me. So do you believe you agree that Deborah needs to try? Yes. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I guess Deborah is a word. But an okay. earnest attempt. Okay, earnest. A conscientious or concerted effort toward an end. Purposeful or industrious mess. Okay, as long as, as that's as long as that's the word and that's everybody's understanding yeah. of the word yeah, and right understanding. No commitment that we're gonna come up with it through the fake sale if it doesn't get put in. No, well, we can't we can't do that. We can't bind it. Yeah, All right. So the next thing is is East Montclair Fire Department would like to meet with us on the earth on August second. Can you do it here? 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 I think we can do this other than like an article. Yeah, I, mean, I, I can tell you that the concern of the fire department is if on the floor of town meeting somebody cuts the budget, what's the next step? That can happen anyway. Well, no, you can't, can't because if it's in the select board's budget, it's, in, it's under Article 1 or whatever it is, shut no. down wages no. taxes. Yes. No, they can. I mean, I mean, if they can pull out and say, we think that number is too high. They can't do it by a line item, they can do it by reducing the number of, not, of the amount of tax. They can, they can bring it out if wrong. That's been, I've been on a million town meetings where the same so, program So has, why uh, can't they do it now with the way it exists now? They can do it. This is so about, why are we changing it? Because, because we, it's a large budget item. We have our trucks separate. We, we want to have large budget items separate. That's kind of our philosophy. And we, we disagree with these numbers. And I don't think, I think it's, and you know, Woodbury has been done that way. They never can vote it down. And you know what the great good thing about it is? And a number of select board members have said this. Um, I don't know if said it in meetings, but at least in discussion. It gets the, the, the fire department to come and explain the value of those big dollars. And you know who shows up every meeting? Woodbury. And they explain and they get standing ovation. Right. And you know what happens when you show up? He's my failure. Why? Because it's buried. And you know what? You're not getting your standing ovation. <laughs> you know? And we, I don't have the standing ovation because I hear on my phone about everyone's taxes and they're being driven out of their home. And I will not be able to say, well, they got a standing ovation and it wasn't buried in the budget and they explained it to everybody. And yeah, you didn't show up to tell me. You can have a different conversation about that. But I think you should guys should be proud of it. You shouldn't be worried. And 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 we we do endeavor to support whether or not that language is that. This is not the time to attack. I mean, this is the time when we have crackpots out here trying to stir up people all the time. Yeah. This is a way of actually protecting that. And that's where my biggest concern is. We want and to I think them. you're gonna have five more people support our department and the budget than we don't. I've never heard anyone. It's only the library. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> Alright, we really have to get moving because we have a couple more things we have to do. So, second to square. Yeah. Um, actually, one other quick point about it that we've talked about every year in budget is it's the one item that's inside the town budget that we don't actually control. What is? The East Montclair Fire Department. The number comes to it. I mean, yes, we go to a meeting, we have some influence, but we don't. It, it, we don't generate the number. We don't generate it, and we still right. have to bake it in and take ownership in a way we don't yeah. for other numbers that are handed to us. Yeah. And we get by the nature of what it is, we need to do that because this is an obligation. We got to money borrowing, sustain this. Yeah, we right. own a freaking building. Of course, we're going to support it. Right. Yeah, well, that's this is trying to keep the people behind it. Yeah, engaged in. I mean, I think that's the right. more I think the more those fire departments that are in the limelight, the better. Yeah. So people really yeah. say, "Oh yeah, 
Yeah. You know, they're lifesavers. They're yeah. You save your house from running down. I mean, I think they need to. Get I think more I think what more. we need to put in the budget. I think we need to put refrigerator magnets in the budget. I'm serious. So people know what to do. It's a good, it's a good idea. But anyways, yeah. so moving on. Um, we talk about the vacant position on the Washington Central Unified Union School District. Yes. Um, thanks, Toby. Forward. Thanks, Toby. Yes, thank you, Toby. I can go. Yeah. 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 Um, thank you, Alfred. <laughs> and I will finish over because this is now. Right. All right. So you've all seen the the statute that talks about the process or how you go about doing this. Um, and I'm just going to say right out of the gate, that I'm not comfortable with the fact that we asked the school central office, if they were going to advertise, and they wrote back and said that, because the dot had posted something on Facebook a, perform a couple of times, and to me, that does not constitute mm -hmm. notice. Saying you're leaving doesn't mean folks understand well, that it's not our responsibility to step up and have push the process. And well, it's not, and it's not Dot's job to have said, um, yeah, you know, if you're interested, contact. Well, that's not her job. She's and that's not an advertisement. It's from yeah. her job. Some people want. Well, well, it, it turns into a well, it's an internal selection. Yeah, we want to be. That's right. So I'm going to go through our. So your idea, Denise, is that we go through our official counts process. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We we advertise. I don't know if we want to put it in. Yeah. You tell me where you want it to be put. You want it in? I say front porch forum. You want it in the heart of that? All of our notice places. All yeah. of our official All notice places. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. And, and then, I mean, you know, we can recommend a slate. We can say these people, you know, all past muster, pick. Pick one. Pick yeah. one. No, well, that's the next, that's that's the next part of this conversation. Right. Well, and then, so the notice, I would say that letters of interest should be sent to the Dallas Town Office. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they get letters, they can send them to us. For the deadline. Right. I think yeah. the, I have to look at the calendar, but I think the deadline would be like the Monday before our we have time. We have a meeting on the ninth, so we want them you know, letters of interest by like the Wednesday before. So yeah. so my concern is what what's to stop the school board from just go ahead and point somebody outside well, they, of us? Well know? they could, but did they, did they say they're gonna respect us? They yeah. have they yeah. have not said that. I think we should fight for that. But I think that, that would be it's our town. Right. Yeah. This is yeah. our seat. This is our seat. Right. Um, right. And right. There, I think there are a bunch of movies anyway, so I don't think they're the best. Part. But I hope that they would I hope they would seriously consider and we can put this in our minutes when we vote on it, they would yeah. seriously consider the person as recommended or persons, if we deem that there are two. Three or four. Right, how many? Um, because that is our seat, that is our voice, that is yeah, our representative sure. on that school board. Yeah. And I would suggest that we then, we're going to have to do interviews mm -hmm. with whoever applies. Maybe it's three more people, maybe it's only Chris and Maggie, I don't know. But we should interview them on the, well, yeah. we're going to have to interview them on the 9th, as you and I have discussed, because they're going to make the appointment on August 11th. So, so there are, so, so there are two interested candidates. Yeah. And how do we know this? They contacted us or did they? No, this is in this US? letter. This is in the letter they sent us from oh. the school board, from the central office or whatever they're called. Okay, I didn't see this one. Mm -hmm. But we don't know how they came to find out, you know, did they respond because they saw Doc's post on front porch form? Because they clearly stated in one of their emails that they were not going to advertise. And I have a real problem with that. So we need to express our thoughts, and our thoughts are that we, we want to interview them, at very least them. Yeah. And we're going to advertise and make sure that everyone has an opportunity right. to mark them in. So it's clearly the kind of process on there. And we should invite our other, when we have two representatives, we should invite the other representative to sit. You know, the interview. Yeah. Scott? 
So webmasters would be Katie Lane Carnes, comma, Cliff Emmons, comma, and uh, Jeremy Weiss, our use uh, clerk. And I would move, I'd like to move that entire slate. Second. These are one year terms. Thank you, that's my question. They're oh, one year terms. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right, are you ready to vote? Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, Katie, could you call up the. Can we do the minutes as. Can we approve minutes as to one piece of it? Is that allowed? I'm not doing that. Um, it doesn't mean anything. We don't have to approve minutes. They're, they're minutes are what happened. But we do that as a form. Well, I put it on the ordinance that the minutes can be approved. I, I just know that you have to have. I know that there's a refining of the minutes. Okay, this is the case. We can, all, we can always go back and. So I, I would move that we uh, approve the minutes from July 12th, 2021. I'm looking for a second. Second. Okay, discussion, right? Right. So we can always go back and amend. That's right. Mm -hmm. can, we, can we have that on an agenda for next? The ninth, you know, potential revisions to July twenty six minutes. I, I where think necessary. I on about potential amendments. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But just because that ordinance thing, you have to fill in all these. That's fine. Things. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. As long as we still have a chance to actually. Yeah, but I, we don't. But, I, we don't I, end, but to be yeah. the record clear, we don't expect changes to the ordinance section of the meeting. That that was all right. fully I legitimate. I agree with that. Okay, you ready to vote? Yep. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 
Do you want to do anything else or would you like to return? Uh, I'd like on other business, old business. Um, I had a conversation with Doug Lilly about five weeks ago and it was, he brought up a, a war story about someone flying by and almost hitting him. Oh God. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I almost got hit twice on my tractor. There's a blind spot below my barn and people come flying up the lower section of Singleton Road. You mean Gales End? Gales End. It opens up from Gales Woods and then people hit it and I can hear them coming when I'm not on a tractor and I know the step out of the road. But it's blind, it's a corner and it's a rise and this person just missed my bucket by this and Isn't that one of your dogs got killed? My dog's got run over. Christopher almost got killed uh, by yesterday. two different drivers. It uh, happened yesterday on Lightning Ridge. Jeff did. and I were well, no, Jeff and I were out for a walk, and who was Lightning Ridge? Is it the same guy, same person? Um, I don't know. Doug's guy. There was a guy I saw several times. Now this guy came barreling down and had to slam on the brakes and sort of veer to miss you guys to not hit a car that was. Stopped, you know, having a neighborly Sunday afternoon chat on Lightning Ridge with the bus. I mean, were, was there a car stopped in the middle of Lightning Ridge Road? Yes. Was it Sunday afternoon? Yeah, well, yes. So and your, your car could have broken down. Well, and they shouldn't be going that fast. Like, That's the whole point. Right. Like, right. that, that guy was going way too fast for the road, period. So, to that end, and to that concern, this end, um, and I spoke with you, Denise, about this informally many weeks ago when I was complaining about the state of the world or something, as I do every day. Um, that I, Doug had asked that reminder stop signs, stop, 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 speed limit signs be placed either side of east mind? and west. His uh, Lightning Ridge Road runs east and west. We'd like to have a sign before you get. Why don't, why don't we get some of those? We have them. No, no, speed limit sign. It says those 35. He's not looking to get it reduced. He just wants a 35 mile an hour sign posted before you get to his farm. Um, the road commissioner can figure that out with Doug um, in both directions. We can do I, that. I would like, and I said, we need to have a farm equipment mm -hmm. warning slow sign for him. And I would like, at least coming from the south, a caution, you know, whatever, blind corner farm equipment. I, I don't know. I don't know, but there's going to be an accident. Well, it's getting so close now, and you know, it's not going to hurt. If I'm on my big tractor, I always hire my Alice Chalmers, and I'm going to leave names out, but it was a Cal's resident came around, and if they hit my tractor, they were the car full of kids, they would have been dead. Well. And I would have still been there. And um, right. you don't want to have that. So I don't want to have that. I don't, I don't, my kids are grown. They're not going to get run over. I'm trying to think of something more aggressive. You know, by Doug's house. Like, you know, we, we asked the school to help us with one of those flashing speed signs by the school. Why not put a, one of those, you know, the solar. You mean the, the mounts? The mounts for our solar? I thought we put one on each side no. as the Tucker coming no, in. No, we, we, we got one on each end of these cows and we got one in the corner. But Why still, they get rotated. So we could put the 35 and then we could also put a post for the flasher. Yeah, I would do that. Or we can make them the 35, but also the post for the flasher. Can you, get, can you get signs where, like, you or Doug could push a button and it would, like, flash? No, I'm on my tractor. When your tractor's when you're Oh, well, 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 I guess you could. That's a lot of I'm just asking for a sign. Okay, so can we just want to put that on the agenda? Uh, I don't think that. It's other business. It's just a sign. Yeah. You ask the road commissioner to start on the signs. Do you want to get help with that? Yeah, if it's like all of these. I mean, that's an easy one. So the request place. is two 35 mile hour signs east and west of Doug's, probably barnyard, I think is what he's thinking, mm -hmm. or fields. I guess, I guess Tucker Road. Is he going to give any? The Tucker Road intersection, and or he'll he'll decide. But yeah. and then um, and what, farm equipment slow warning signs yeah. for Doug both directions. And I need a, I'd like to have two too, but one would be great just coming from the south for me. 
Right. Yeah, we want to make sure so that there's okay. And yeah. there's fit for uh, 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 well, that would be great. I think we should think set we should up to do that I while we set should, up because yeah. these are risk areas. People take lightning bridge is always a problem. Yeah, always. Well, the best things going. There's there's the so radar signs are highly effective, and they don't have their the residual effect on those has been proven. They've done this the last a long time. People, we need one on it works. Line, it works. It slows people me down. down. We and need one on West County Road. Being able to move 50 miles an hour on that. Road. They're not that expensive. They're really, right. Yeah. They're, so, so go ahead and get off on that. Okay, so yeah. posts for the speed limits. Right, and then that's, 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 that's really good on Lightning Bridge. That long straightaway there. Oh, it's horrible. It's a nice track. I actually like that location for a flash. Yeah, that's okay, we'll, we'll do both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's, that's a, a good idea. Because that's also a school. That's a school emergency. Right. It's not emergency. Well, it's, 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 it's not going back to the other ones. You know what? We've got this money. It's going to roll over from the highway budget. If we need oh, some yeah. of these things yeah. right now, now's a good time to do it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 yeah, let's put the let's put the radar one. We should put that on the agenda. We should put the radar thing on. Like a thirty-five dollar. Is that that post is pretty expensive? I can't remember. Yeah, we do a couple. Like, they were a couple grand, weren't they? Yeah, oh, they were. Oh, yeah. I think so. No, well, not the post, but the whole yeah, apparatus. The radar is safe. Oh, we're looking at the whole sign. Fifteen hundred. We should talk about the post. Well, we get, yeah. we have some money to spend. Oh, good. That's oh, good. Great, yeah, that's but, but that doesn't preclude the thirty-five dollars solution. It's very right. well, well, no, but that's about what they cost, right? Fifty, thirty-five, fifty. Yeah, yeah. so I think if we, 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 we put in those signs, I think the post and the signs like a hundred bucks. Uh, we put the post in. We put the signs in thirty-five. Where you suggest we go, and then we and, and then we get the consultation with Doug. Right, and then we get the flashing speed limit signs because we right. now's a good time to do it because we have money. Can I make a suggestion too? I don't know if you want to do it, you know, I I would suggest that we buy one or two traffic lights. Who do you want? Well we have we one. Can, do we have it? I we think borrow from the region plan for a I know I used to do it for I know how to do it and I've done it. Yeah, that's what I was saying. See I can see it. See I can see it. Well this you have to kind of schedule it because they may have so many. Right, but they're usually yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah, right away. Right. Really good. I was gonna say, I know these they're valuable. What you have to tell them I mean I used to always do all my speed studies. I'm just gonna volume I can't like I don't know the last year but I did yeah, do that for speed and I did it for fifteen million hours. So that you could, but you slot on the machine, you know, did you download the data? Because then you yeah, find out there were patterns for these people that abuse. I, I've talked with hundreds of these. And the people that violate, they tend to move at the same time. And I used to actually post my results, and the police would use that in the sheriff's. Uh, and they could have put a guy out there and you look for that pattern. Yeah. And it meant that the ones that put this, uh, you could kind of lay away. That's, kind of, that's, that's a good great. idea. Yeah. Well, because they do, they, you'd be amazed at how how consistently I kind of analyze that. Okay, you ready to? I'm sorry. Well, 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 I know we want that. But where are the county road speed limit? Um, I've got to catch back up with Eaton. They've done um, the speed check thing. I just need to catch up with him to do the process. So it's okay. you'll see it's on the agenda. It's moving up. Okay. Up the ladder. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. So, is there a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Hey, Katie. <laughs> as soon as you can get me the draft minutes, the better. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night, Katie. You're on mute. I can't hear you. you. Oh yeah. Sure. I will, Denise. I'll send them to you tonight. Um, the first, the first round of it before I've fixed spelling. <laughs> morning is fine. I'm not looking at them tonight. Okay. And I got to pack up this stuff. So how come I don't have any service here?